Hello everyone, it's time for another edition of Adventures in Careerland! I am your host, Adriano Magnifico. I am the career lead at the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center. That's a very cool high school, post-secondary, polytech style of institution that offers all kinds of neat programs, such as the one in which we are immersed at this second. This is the broadcast media studio from which we're recording and the program that is running at this second. So we're in the podcast studio, but there's a lot of other programs in this building. You could be an early childhood educator. You could be a hairstyler. You could be an information systems expert, a security, cybersecurity person, new media design. You could be a plumber, a baker. You could be a mechanic, neat programs. It's a place where students can come in their high school life to think about, I wonder what the future can hold. I'd like to test or gauge something about me. So it's a really neat space, and uh, I think the gem is the broadcast media program. That's why we're in it. We're broadcasting live here, and I have co-hosts with me. One of these co-hosts is from the broadcast media program, Andre Poirier. The one and only, it is uh, me. How are you, sir? I am doing great. Okay, listen, we had a major celestial event yesterday. Did you partake? No, I was stuck inside doing work. Come on. <laughs> You didn't yeah. even feel it. You, you weren't watching it on the television or on some, on some feed or something. Nope. We had a solar, we, we had a lunar, a solar eclipse, man. I don't know. And you didn't care. Well, I did care, but I was busy doing stuff for skills. Okay. Running around the building, filming stuff, editing things, only making a full three minute video in only five hours. Well, that's, that's kind of amazing, but uh, you, you missed a lifetime moment. But that's okay. Maybe I like your time. commitment to the program. That's a fantastic <laughs> thing. And we have Lena Alfori. How are you, Lena? <laughs> I'm doing good. And she's from the Applied Business Management Program. And again, this is an odd scenario we have. We usually have broadcast media kids who are the co-hosts. We have our first person from another program. So, Lena, what did you think of the celestial event, this solar eclipse? I did go outside. Um, I did look at it. I don't know if that was... I, I don't know if, if I was looking at the right thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it was the Did you have glasses on? It. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, don't, uh. I, think I, I don't think I was, like, actually looking at it. I looked up. I, I saw the sun, but I don't know if... It was pretty bright, but I don't, I don't that's know. What, that's what the solar eclipse yeah, is, probably, looking at yeah. the sun. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what I was looking at. What did you think you were looking no, at No, but it was there? around the time. <laughs> <laughs> and you the clouds were glasses. over it. So, oh, my no. gosh. Our education system is failing both of you. They should have set you <laughs> out for that major moment. That, those are those great moments where you look into the sky and you wonder about who we are, what we're doing in the universe. That's a major moment. Yeah. Think, of, think of those things moving around the universe. That's and so at, cool. at, at this moment, it gave us a glimpse of something incredible. Mm -hmm. I remember the one in 1979. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And it was a total eclipse yeah. in Winnipeg. And I remember noontime, the thing just went dark around that time. Yeah. The whole street went dark. I remember a dog just freaking out on the street. Mm -hmm. Birds went silent. It was just a, the, the temperature went down. Yeah. The whole thing it was just an amazing thing. Anyway, I hope you remember a day like this. And look back on it. Look at, look back at some of the cool photos. You won't see a photo like that Yeah, again. I've seen some on uh, people were posting it and filming it and stuff. So yeah, can, I just yeah. got a nice sequence from a, a friend yeah. who's a pilot. Mm -hmm. And it was in some oh, wow. port of call. I don't know where he took it. I just sent a note. Did you actually take that from the plane? I can't believe it. Because you can see it's kind of cloudy, but he gave me a sequence of it. I'll show it to you later. A sequence wow. of, of, of the moon covering this sun up. That's kind so of cool. an amazing thing. Yeah. Just yeah. amazing. I, it's, it, it always fills me full of wonder to watch these things. Anyway, we had our lives riveted by something in the sky. That's kind of cool. Now, in this pod, we have a cool podcast that's going to rivet you as well. I think we have a former student of mine as our guest today. That's Anthony Centerini. He is coming from Vancouver in his studio, from his studio, the 12th Street Sound Studio. Anthony, how are you doing, sir? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're uh, taking the time to do this. You're a hard guy to... To book, you're a hard guy to uh, <laughs> connect with on these because you have so much work doing. You're running a sound studio. Tell us a bit yep. about what you do. You're in Vancouver, where you're at, what you're doing. Yep. So I am in New Westminster, which is just outside Vancouver. 
and uh, I run a studio called 12 Street Sound. I'm basically a, a full-time music producer, recording engineer. Uh, I've been in this space for about seven years. I've been out in BC since 2015. I do a whole host of other things too. I do some live work. Uh, I play in a band. I co-own a copywriting agency. Yeah, so I do. I, I, I keep pretty busy. I'm, I'm glad we're finally able to do this because I, I feel like we've been trying for quite some time. So. Yeah, we have been. We have been. But you're a hard guy to pin down because you're so busy. And that's and that's that's a great thing. I uh, just want to know, like, I remember you. This is you're a Windsor Park collegiate grad. You're a Winnipegger. Yep. Uh, and you spent most of your life in Winnipeg. You've been in Vancouver for the last 10 or so. Yep. Um, I recall you back in the day. You joined a program I started there called the Career Internship Program. Yep. And I remember trying to drag your butt into the program. You were a very hard person. To bring into the program because I was trying to build the profile of the program. I thought, and Centerini was one of these guys in the school with a high profile. I thought, I got to bring a high profile guy into the program. So what was, think about your life in high school there, grade 11, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recruit you, you and your colleagues and your peers in grade 11. What's yeah. going through your head in high school in grade 11? I, I think the main thing with, I happen to be one of those people fortunate enough to already know what I wanted to do with my life. So I just wanted to get on with it. That's kind of where I was at. So I, I remember having a conversation with you and you, you approached me and, and said, hey, I want you to join this, this SIP program. And I had you make a promise to me right then and there. And I, I said, well, if you can get me an internship at a recording studio, I'll join. But you need to promise me right now that that's what you're going to do. And you did. And I'm, I'm very thankful for it. So. You know how hard it was to find that studio? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did, did you go there in person? Yes. Oh. <laughs> and I, right. I had no idea where it was. Remember that studio? You interned during this career. Part of the career internship program involves you going on an internship with a company and um, bringing you on board and, you know, where do you want to be? What, what do you want to test out? What do you want to gauge? And you want to go to that studio. And I remember going down there. It was in the heart of our inner city. And I couldn't find it at the beginning because tell us why talk, talk, you were at bedside studios, correct? Yeah. So I was at bedside for about a year and a half. Um, and, and it, yeah, it's definitely in a, it's inconspicuous. Um, it's in a, uh, old uh, Ukrainian church, I believe. And, you know, they, they built a whole recording studio inside it, but from the outside, there's no markings. There's no nothing. It actually looks pretty much abandoned. Which is cool. I mean, I've kind of taken that philosophy and, and integrated that in my own studio here where you can never find it. But yeah, I was there for a year and a half after SIP. So SIP gave me, I think, a, I think it was a six week internship originally. Yeah. And then I just, I stayed on for quite a while. So what is it now? You're a, uh, you had a band going there too in high school, Jack Strait, because yeah. I, I bought the, uh, the CD. <laughs> and I, I was looking around for it. I found that CD at home and I put it in the old CD player. You guys could play. Oh, no. And you did. Did you play a little bit at school dances and stuff like that, too? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember Riley did. Remember your colleague Riley? Yeah, I, I remember doing the um, the Kiss show, like a Kiss tribute band with Riley and Kevin Johnson. And then I think I think Nick Sally was the bass player. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I remember doing that. I don't remember if Jack Strait ever played in Windsor Park. I, I know we obviously did a lot of shows, a lot of all ages shows at that time. But yeah, honestly, don't remember. <laughs> well, but that's okay. But you were, what I always admired about you is, and I always admired this about rockers in general, you were the drummer and the lead singer. At that the is, time, yeah. That yeah. is very impressive. And yeah. I, I, I don't do that in bands anymore. Usually I, I actually try. I try really hard not to sing <laughs> in the band I'm in now, but... Uh, yeah, at the, t at the time, you know, like in high school, you just kind of got to make it work. And uh, we didn't really know any great lead singers. Not to say that I was a great lead singer because I'm, I'm not, uh, never have been. But um, it was just the easiest way to see the vision through, I think, at that point. And it was a fun band. I mean, I had, I had a great time doing that. But it was, it was very much a high school thing. <laughs> <laughs> you still, are you still in a band? Or in the band, I'm yeah. So so I, I play in a in a, a duo now called Big Fuzz. And oh, we're starting to do some touring and stuff like that. So that's kind of been one of the main things I've started working on in the last eighteen months or so, and it's it's going pretty well, I would say. Um, yeah, we've we've 
we had just gotten our, our first U.S. festival invite, and unfortunately, we had some visa issues at the border, so we couldn't do that. But we've done some touring. We've played in Manitoba. Um, we've played. A, we did a, a festival up in Churchill. We did a date, I think, at the Osborne Tap House, which was the old Toad yes. here. Uh, the, well, there in Winnipeg. Um, and what and kind yeah, of music just, do you guys make? Is it still you're still it, doing rock? It's it's still rock. Yeah, it, I am just the drummer in that, and I've got. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to play with uh, an incredible songwriter, guitar player, kind of all around ridiculous and do you guys, musician. Do you guys have any inspirations that like p bands that inspire you guys, your music? I mean, all music inspires us in one way or another. Like Francis, my uh, uh, guitar player, he's he's got a jazz degree and stuff like that. So. It's not solely just rock, but um, most, you know, when, when we market ourselves, it's kind of like, oh, you, if you're a fan of World Blood or July Talk or any of those, you know, kind of on the radio rock bands, you'll probably like what we do. Well, I've actually yeah. listened to your song Always On My Mind. It's yeah. really good. I actually Great. really enjoyed it. Great. Happy to hear that. Well, good for you. You actually listened to Big Fuzz? <laughs> yeah. Are yeah. you kidding me? It's no, actually, like, this is true, Anthony. I said, yeah, he plays it just before we got on here. I said, yeah, Anthony plays in a band now called Big Fuzz. I, I never heard of him. And of course, my Gen Z person beside me goes, oh, yeah, I listen to Big Fuzz. <laughs> there you go. Holy okay. smokes, you've got a following at the table. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great to hear. So when you're thinking you joined this program, and we talked a bit about this yesterday, uh, you're thinking of education or not you're thinking of should i go get some education and like you're in the audio engineering field right and you you're watching it play out in an internship it is yep. connecting to you intensely but you, but you're not thinking of uh education in any way how come when, when it comes to post-secondary and that sort of thing it never really appealed to me i honestly you know i, I looked at uh, recording arts programs in Winnipeg and at the time I, I didn't see anything that I thought was better than the internship that I was already in and university itself I would have been grasping at straws to pick the classes I wanted I right like on. I said yeah. I, I kind of already knew what I wanted to do and, and U of M U of W didn't have anything like that uh, Red River sort of had the, the broadcast media program which is adjacent to what I wanted to do but not so specialized that it, I thought it was what I you know what I wanted to do but you know that's interesting because in this program we have now called the broadcast media program you probably would have taken this in a heartbeat no? yeah just to learn the recording side more and, and get hands-on experience probably yeah and do you have any regrets about not going into post-secondary absolutely not yeah. okay all good that's good to <laughs> absolutely hear absolutely not no this is about uh, Anthony was is always this person you were so driven uh, we were talking about, yeah, do you remember the big business plan you wrote about marketing Jack Strait and all that kind of thing? You went, I don't remember that. And I, I'm looking around for it. Now. I'll find it. I know it's around somewhere. <laughs> but man, what a what a report you guys wrote about we're going on the road. We have our dates. And you guys were planning to take the show on the road. And it was so real life. Sometimes kids write business plans that are full of whimsy and possibility, but they're not as realistic. Yours was Hey, I'm going on the road. We're going to make a business plan about what it's going to cost to go on the road and yeah, how we promote sure. our brand. I thought that was so cool. Amazing. I mean, it probably wasn't like we didn't actualize, like we didn't actually tour until I want to say 2010 or 2011. So it was after I left high school, but um, we eventually did do it. And, and, you know, I mean, as with any band, it's, it's like a relationship, right? There's a lot of interpersonal stuff that goes on there. And, and at the time, you know, we were still trying to figure it out. And so we did. You mean you were kind of like the Eagles. Kind of you broke up. You broke up, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. But you were now think I, when you're the drummer and the singer, how hard, is it, how hard is it to do that? Like I, I've always admired Henley and Phil Collins and these guys are amazing to me. How hard is it to do that? It, it was very difficult, and I don't think I ever did it well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I listened to it. Your, your EP has you guys playing. You're, you're the singer. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's done separately. I'm not playing drums and singing at the same time on the record. Yeah. It's, you know, I played, we, we played all the bed tracks, like drums, guitar, bass, then I sang on it, which is much easier than doing both <laughs> at the same time and right. uh, that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean. It was fun at the time, you know, it's just just learning how to do it. Of course. So are, you're a big fan, obviously, of experiential kind of education. Go out and do it, yep. not just not just read about it. 
Yeah. At this point, I sort of look at, so I'm 32 now, been out of high school for, I guess it'll be 15 years this year, which is really weird to think about. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I sort of see the first, the first studio I ever did on my own, which was, it was called Gateway Recording Co. And it was in my parents' basement, but I went out and, you know, took out a loan from the bank of mom and dad and more equipment than a 19 year old should ever buy. You know, I, I see that first period of about, I think it was three or four years um, running that business and, and the challenges that came along with that. And, you know, realizing in, in high school, you're kind of in a vacuum and, and it's uh, you know, if it's surreal, if right? you get recognized at your high school, you tend to think that you can take that anywhere. And <laughs> I found out very, very quickly that that's not the way the world works. <laughs> and so I, 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 I sort of see that as as my education. And then once I actually moved out to BC and started a studio here, um, that's the beginning of my professional career. So when you went to BC, uh, you were working with uh, Long and McQuaid in town, correct? Yeah. So I, I originally, I, I was, uh, I, I moved out to BC to be with somebody as a lot of people do. Didn't work out, which is, which is great. Um, and I, I basically approached, I flew out to BC a few months prior to moving and just kind of, you know, started um, applying places, the usual BC audio engineering jobs at EA and, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, eventually I, I took a referral to Long McQuaid and I, I was, a, a like I said, I'd started a studio in Winnipeg. So I was a bit of a regular at the, at the Winnipeg store and they gave me a great referral and I ended up getting hired at the, the Surrey one hundred fourth Avenue location out here, and I stayed there for about three and a half years. That was how I moved to BC. Well, wow, you did some amazing things there. You told me some numbers. Tell me about your success yeah. at Long and McQuaid yeah. in, in, so, uh, in BC. Yeah, I basically went there. And I, I guess I'll give context to that. It wasn't really the ultimate goal. Uh, it wasn't to work in a music store, but um, my philosophy was that no matter who you are, you have to go buy guitar strings. And most musicians will do that themselves. So it was it was a chance to kind of, you know, get integrated into the BC music world a little bit. I worked as hard as I could at that job. I ended up being there, um, the top seller in that location for calendar years running. I was top fifteen in the company with, and that's over eighty stores and twelve hundred employees. They sent me to uh, Toronto, to LA, to all sorts of stuff. They, they treated me really well. It was, it was, yeah, I mean, I, I'm thankful for my time there. I met everybody I needed to meet. I got this studio from that job, from, from meeting somebody uh, who was starting a studio, and they became a close friend. And, uh, you know, most of my now clients can be traced to one interaction at that location. So, Do you have any, like, fun or cool stories when you used to work there like any cool musicians roll in there and you go oh. yeah i mean well there'd be there'd be bands that roll in all the time um folks from deer rouge would come in and uh, uh you know rent stuff and just about everybody you know at one point or another touring musicians would roll in there was, there was a time where some winnipeg musicians actually showed up at my location and i was like wait a second what are you doing here you know and they, and they were uh friends of mine and i was like oh my god i haven't seen you in you know three years nice to see you i'll, I'll rent you a guitar amp now kind of thing um but yeah it was it was generally a, a the the best stories i have all come from the trip to california like they sent me to nam the um national association of music merchants it's basically a huge conference like a hundred thousand people attend it in anaheim and you know like i'd be walking down the hall and bootsy collins would come back the other way with an entourage and like you know there's tons of every, every uh every endorsed musician basically is there so if they have some sort of relationship with uh, a manufacturer they're usually at nam so uh, that was that was a great few days that was pretty fun hey they're showing a lot of trust in you when they do that right uh yeah. and and did you feel like i my impression is you built a network you talked about yourself as being kind of an introvert yesterday 100%. do you recall but yeah, you, you, you won't see me go into a, a, a like, I don't usually go to shows very often. I, you won't see me talking in a big group of people and being the life of the party. That's not really my vibe. <laughs> but, but you've learned the subtle act of yep. working and building relationships. For sure. And so you sure. had to call on that um, piece, right? A big, a big part of my, I don't want to call it a business plan because it's not necessarily that, but 
a lot of the angle when it comes to recording is, is to build long-term relationships. I would, I really believe in the whole underdog philosophy and, and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, I love working with musicians that are doing their first or second album and they kind of want to, you know, we, we build a relationship, we keep working together, you know, that's sort of my philosophy. I would rather somebody do that all day long than just show up, do a one day session and then leave. I love that. Um, I love that. Do you I consider yourself an underdog? Do you consider yourself a bit of an underdog? I've been pretty fortunate in my career. I, I don't know if I, I, I think the drive comes from that and the drive comes from being knocked down and, and learning how to get back up again. I don't know if I necessarily refer to myself as an underdog, but I definitely have that Winnipeg scrappy thing, right? Like the, you know, when you, hear about the jets and stuff like that and they're always you know scrappy and and, and trying to uh uh overcome people's perception of of them i i think i would fall into that category well that's good so you figure you're a jets fan now or a canucks fan oh, what i always it? have been yeah jets fan die hard out of boy out of boy watch I, every game yep i like Even that you uh, well that's awesome i i like that you hey, were you a hockey player did you play any sports back in no the, in god the day? no i can't even skate no, that's what i recall <laughs> i i recall that you were just into the music thing that was your whole gig at school yeah. and you were working it yeah, and I mean, but uh, but here's the other cool part about you anthony very quickly is yep. you were a very talented academic you were a very good writer you were a very yep. good formatter when it came to the computers and seeing texts and turning them into very powerful pieces and 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 images for people and you always got a wow factor from people i i you always got that from me i went jesus amazing stuff is that part now you gotta have a, you have a copyright business yeah some so, people are going um, to school to get that skill and credential to do that right not you you learned it through so, the school of hard knocks again so how do you become a copyright business so, so that's that's a story um it's actually my partner's business uh originally um she started it during the pandemic and uh the the whole reason i got involved i, I did some freelance writing for her um when, when she needed my help kind of thing but she eventually pitched me an idea i was about to get plucked for um to to be the general manager of uh of, of a related music industry business not a studio but something else and uh they were trying to uh recruit me and uh she basically was like i don't think you should do this i'll offer you half my company stick with me and uh and so that's how i started getting involved in that now i still uh i consider myself more less of a writer and more of an entrepreneur so I tend to stay behind the scenes and I actually, you know, like I'll, I, I don't work a whole ton on that business, but um, I do help with operations and general strategy and all that sort of stuff more than I help with the writing, but I can do it. Like, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things I, I, I tend to, you know, even if I'm not into everything creative and maybe I don't focus on it, I tend to be able to fake it till you make it a little bit. And, and writing is sort of like that same with anything artwork related or you know it's all creative adjacent so if you've got a keen eye for detail I, I feel like those are all sort of transferable hey that's an interesting perspective the old fake it till you make it our previous guest also had that mentality he just said well how are you doing this i never saw this in you in high school fake it till you make it and then you figure it out and suddenly i'm good at it right what's the message you would give to a young person who is thinking I'm not sure what to do. I think I like this. What would you, what message would you give them? If you were standing in front of a group of grade 11s and they were thinking, what should I do with my life? What, what advice would I you give I have a few different thoughts on that. Um, if you're one of those people who's fortunate enough to know what they want to do, I would say stay true to that. Stay true to yourself. Block out the noise and chase it. If you're one of those people that doesn't quite know what they want to do, then try the most adventurous thing first and and do the thing that nobody wants you to do right like do the creative thing society tends to beat creativity out of people do that first try it see how you like it you might find it's the best thing you could do you might find it's not for you but then you can go and chase a tr traditional career a less creative career and uh and, and you'll be fine yeah, that's good advice because you're making the good point. We talked about the high, the high school system a little bit yep. on the phone. Yep. Tell me, is it about creativity? Did you find that like at, at times you were 
uh, I, I'm not sure the word is dissatisfied, but you are, or, or disillusioned. I'm not sure you can choose the word about the educational system. What would you think is lacking in there? Does it have to do with creativity? I would, I don't know if it's necessarily creativity. I think individuality is a big part of it. Like high school tends to, well, the education system in general tends to treat people in groups rather than as individuals. And I think that's, you know, I, I mean, my, my, disillusionment or, or whatever you want to call it from from the high school system I, I think that was a me thing I don't necessarily think that was a, a systemic thing but um, it is hard to carve your your own path in high school for sure like you have to be very loud about it you have to be very um, driven because I mean at the end of the day the education system is trying to help you survive in life and it does that on mass, right? Like it, it, it expects people to get a nine to five and we're fortunate, you know, like, I mean, even in the, uh, in the, in the LRSD, like you're fortunate to have schools like the arts and tech center and to have, you know, shops classes and stuff like that. But, um, they are ultimately there to help you figure out a career path. Yeah, of, of course, ultimately. So you're thinking the function of schools should be to help you to get on that path and get in touch with your best self somewhere. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, get get in touch with who you are, or find your identity, that sort of thing, yeah. for sure. And yeah. and it's hard to do that. In, it's in the super hard. And that's yeah. you've pointed out a great a great difficulty in the system is trying to teach a mass of students yeah. thirty credits, consume, 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 consume other people's work, and right. it's very difficult. And there are pockets of it, right? You saw it, like the SIP was a pocket of it, right? Where you go yeah. off and go create something, go do something, go. And we were constantly going out of the building to meet and interact with people in that program. Right. So that, that was, and remember I always asked you guys, I put you in these leadership positions. We're going to do this workshop for all the grade nines. And some of you would look at me. I don't even think you like doing that because that wasn't your style, but I forced you guys to go, you're going to stand in front of these grade nines and do this half hour workshop with them. And you, and I train you a bit in, in the class and some of you were just going, holy smokes. I discovered my um, public speaking anxiety in high school, for sure. Not well, necessarily with you, but there, there were times where I got put in positions like that. And uh, it actually, yeah, it's, it was a struggle, for sure. Absolutely. That's difficult. We have an entrepreneur here. <laughs> As Lena, yes. Lena's running her own business right now. So this must be what's, of what's great the interest business? to you. I would love to, I'd love to hear more about that. It's um, a sustainable clothing brand that I started in grade 10. And oh, yeah. I just had my first launch, I think about like almost a month ago. It was these like yeah. cargo yeah. pants and I completely sold out. So I'm working on my restock Woo. right now. So it's going really great. good. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And are are you uh, are you designing the clothing? Are you yeah? So I I came up with the design and the sketch in grade ten, and then when I actually like I bring it to life in grade eleven, like almost a year later, I started learning how to sew. I made pants from scratch, and then um, I figured out that making all of them by myself is going to be really tough. So I contacted a manufacturer. I went through that whole process looking for like a good one for months, and then. I found the one and basically like he ships them to me and I kind of like touch it up and put my own little touch Amazing. on it, package them, deliver them. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and and do you, you plan on doing that? Like, have you have you thought that entrepreneurship is is your path? Are oh, you for sure. Something in fashion, Great. for sure. Like I plan to go to a fashion school. I think maybe MC College. There's one in Winnipeg here or maybe even outside of Winnipeg. So, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank congrats. I, I, so I wish you continued success. It's not an easy road, but yeah, uh, it's tough. Um, the fact that you've sold out of a, in, in, you know, uh, th th I mean, that's amazing. That's always, you know, yeah, I think that was really when the point, like that was the point when I, proof yeah, all, all exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's so, amazing. Hey, what are you thinking here, Andre? <laughs> huh? Are you thinking of starting an entrepreneur? Are you getting inspired by this entrepreneurship conversation? <laughs> Do you want my honest answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't really think that the business type is me. I feel like I'm better off just being, you do this, I'll go do it, and then I get back to you. So Here's you, what I have. So we can always put you in a factory yeah. line. That's not a big deal. In fact, you can work in Lena's shop, <laughs> maybe making some of the clothes. I, I think we got the right place for it. Uh -oh. It sounds like you're quite a creative person. So like when you, uh, if you're the type of person that wants to just go and execute things, which the world needs like I've been yes. that person yes. a ton of my life and continue to be um, 
what's the field that you're interested in? Are you interested in broadcast? Are you interested in videography? Do you like holding the camera all the time here? Do you like being in front of the camera or behind the camera? Behind the camera. Actually, I never knew how much I'd enjoy being a camera person until we started doing all the events, like hockey, uh, the play. I really enjoyed it because there's a little bit of creativity in it. You have to get a good shot yes. and make it seem nice. And that's part of the cool part Amazing. about this program, uh, Anthony. They have to go out. They will stream yep. and video or use professional cameras to stream the high school provincial football championships. Amazing. That's awesome. And they have to hook up all the pieces. They have to the camera going. They have to stream it. And there's, they've, had, they've had a million viewers in their LRSD TV streaming Whoa. space. Like It's amazing. Oh, over that's the last division wide. Years. Yeah, division wide. That's awesome. Yeah, it, that's it is great. amazing. So I, I, I like what you said. So as much as you said, I don't want to be the person running it, I, you're getting a sense of where your fit is most comfortable. And that's yeah, an important and thing. I, I mean, it, if, you can, if you can do that and, you know, be reliable and be a self-starter and all that sort of stuff, there's lots of work and lots of opportunities for that, you know, that role. Um, do you have your own camera set up and do you work on it outside of school? No, I don't have the money. Not yet. They're yeah, just no. starting here. Like this Not is, a, and, yeah. and and you know what? These two young people are both in grade eleven. They're coming back to the program in grade twelve, so they're going to get another dose of this, and they're getting high school credits here. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you would have yeah, been all would, over really... this, Anthony. You would have been all over this. <laughs> I mean, amazing. this the little studio you have is looks pretty cool. Like it's, it is it's, very cool. You know, that's that's great. It is very cool. So who are this? Who are some of the big mentors in your life? Then the ones who. Uh, I always I, I wrote an article for a magazine called Tap on the Shoulder, where I said who's who's yeah. tapped you on the shoulder and pushed you in a direction. It may not even have been um, supplied you with money sometime or so. It's those people who gave you the sage advice and said, uh, or I see something in you sometimes that are more important than anything. Any any people yeah, like that so in your life? I, I I've been fortunate to have lots. Um, one of the closest people in my life. I'll give a shout out to Jason because he's, he'll probably listen to this. Probably won't be one of the people that listens to this. I, I, I met him when I was quite young. I was in high school and he was buying, I, I think I bought a guitar off him or he bought an amp off me. I, I can't remember what, but we met a couple times. And then as I started growing my studio business and, and going into that, uh, he was the one who would repair all my stuff. And uh, we kind of became pretty close through that process like I, I i would say like their family um he's, he's like a a brother or a dad depending on the day kind of thing so he's given me a lot of business advice he's also an entrepreneur and uh sort of believes in that same philosophy of being scrappy and not stopping until you get what you need to get kind of thing um so i've taken a lot of direction from him over the years my parents have always been really supportive of the music thing even if they you know, sometimes they haven't understood it and that's okay. And sometimes our relationship was rocky and that's okay. Um, but we're now in a really good place and they tend to be, you know, some people that I can lean on when I just kind of need to talk things out. And, and my partner too, like she's, um, she's become an incredible uh, businesswoman over the past few years. Uh, she's probably the best networker I've ever met in my life. She can walk into a room with a bunch of strangers and walk out with either a contract or a friend or both. Oh, that's and fantastic. That to me is wild. Like I, I just don't understand how that works. Um, so, and, and, you know, I mean, I, I'm surrounded by peers that I'm, I'm all really thankful for. And I learn from every single day, every time somebody comes into the studio and they want to create something that I haven't heard, there's bound to be a lesson there for me. And uh, I, I'm I'm always really fortunate. I, and, you know, I, I've also had, when I was at Long and McQuaid, I had uh, a great manager. I mean, he kind of showed me all the um, the retail ropes and, and how, you know, margins and all that stuff really work and how, you know, not, not just on a surface yes, level, yes. but how to, you know, the manufacturing side of things and, and all that sort of stuff. So I, I've been fortunate to have a, a really, really strong network when it comes to mentors and, and peers yes yes and you know what it, it it really sounds like as much as you haven't read the textbooks you live the textbook which is yeah. which is really the key part of life like you really only learn pieces when you experience them and yeah. and you try them out and you iterate and pivot and you get great advice from people it sounds like you've had 
the, you've been the beneficiary of some people who have just seen something good in you too. They have to see something in you too, Anthony. Yeah, for sure. Or, or, yeah, or no, you I, know, they're not going to invest I mean, that time. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've, I've got gaps too, like everybody does. Yes. But um, I think there are gaps both ways, right? Like if you do post-secondary, you'll have some gaps. If you, do, if you don't do post-secondary, you'll have some gaps. It's just a matter of what you choose to do with it, I think. Um, I've been really fortunate. It took me a while though. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. We do have something we do at the end of every episode called quick cues. If you want to know a quick cues car, they're just quick cues, quick questions. Very quick. It's not like a Dr. Seuss book. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to give you this or that question. You just answer as quickly as you can. All right. Go for it. Bill Collins or Don Hanley? Phil Collins. Room temperature water or cold water? Cold. Snare or bass drum? Oh, snare drums. Favorite month? Uh, uh, April. Be early or be late? Be early every time. Favorite band? Oh, God. I don't have an answer to that. Megadeth or Metallica? Can I say neither? (laughs) Metallica if I have to choose. (laughs) Head, shoulders, knees, or toes? Head. Coffee or tea? Sorry? Co- coffee. All day long. And oh, latte for the final question, what is your favorite podcast? Adventures in Career Life. <laughs> it might change tomorrow, but that's what it is today. <laughs> well, you had to answer that one correctly, or we just wouldn't have uploaded you, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know what? Anthony, you, uh, this has been amazing. I, I, honestly, as a, as a teacher... I feel so proud of what you've done and just having been part of that journey at the beginning and interacted with you. I just, it's just amazing what you've done and, and the journey and the risks you've taken and this sense of purpose is just astounding. I, I, I'm warm and fuzzy inside right now. And that's why I think you've called yourself the big fuzz. (laughs) That's what I think. But I, I'm really appreciative of you doing this. Do you have any last thoughts you'd like to say just about life learning and, Living the dream? Well, I think you just got to go do it. I, I mean, at, yeah, just experience it. That's kind of that's kind of what it's been for me. You have more time than you think. You know, I, I always thought in high school and just after high school that I always had to accomplish things very quickly. But when you look back at, you know, one year, five years, 10 years, that's when you actually see the results of what you've done and it'll blow your mind every single time. Like if I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, high school me could not have pictured what I do now. And, and, you know, uh, I, I think that that's, um, that's the great part about, you know, getting into your late twenties, early thirties kind of thing. So you have, you have plenty of time and you're in the prime of it right now. Enjoy it. Oh yeah. I I, keep it going. I feel like I'm just getting going. Yeah. And I really appreciate you taking the time because I know we've had some trouble connecting because you're such a busy guy and I appreciate that. And I like that about you too. Um, so Hey everybody, that's, uh, Another edition of Adventures in Career Land. You can find us on all your favorite podcast platforms. You can also check us out on social media platforms. And uh, I'd like to give a quick little thank to Achilles, uh, Chin, and Grace, who are our production team in the studio. And, of course, Lena and Andre, thanks for doing this. And that's it for another edition of Adventures in Career Land. Adventures in Career Land.